All right, students, I want to talk to you about Bohr models and how to create them. But before we get started, I just want to give you a little bit of background about this guy, Niels Bohr. Bohr was the one who invented Bohr models after he was unhappy with the old model. Now, based on his predecessor, Rutherford, who said that, all right, if we have a densely centered nucleus that's positively charged and electrons floating on the outside that are negatively charged, there's something wrong with this picture. He said that if this were the case with the negative and the positive charge, shouldn't the electron eventually lose energy and spiral into the nucleus and crash and burn? Well, Niels Bohr proposed a different model that dealt with electron energy levels, where he said that electrons must reside in specific rings or energy levels, and they can jump between them and they actually emit light and different colors of light when they do so. But he was the one who invented something called the Bohr model. So I want to teach you how to make the Bohr model, and I'm going to do that using our periodic table. Now, when I make Bohr models, I like to envision our periodic table as kind of a board game, per se. Uh, and if you know how to play the game, then you can easily create Bohr models. Now, a couple things you need to know. Uh, one, and most importantly, is that you should know how to use... Uh, the elements from the periodic table, how to figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So let's try to figure out how to create the Bohr model of carbon. Uh, so we know a few things about carbon by looking at it. We know that carbon is right here in group 14, so I'm going to go ahead and place my piece on there. Um, carbon is atomic number 6 and atomic mass is 12.01. Now using this information, we can tell ourselves that, okay, if we had a carbon nucleus, I'll go ahead and draw a nucleus here, we would know based on this information that because the atomic number is 6, the number of protons must equal 6. The other thing we know that its atomic mass is about 12, or the mass number is about 12. We just rounded that number out. Now that's the number of protons plus the neutrons. So in order to figure out how many neutrons there are, we're just going to take the atomic mass and minus the atomic number up here. And so 12 minus 6 is 6, so the number of neutrons is equal to 6. So we have our centerpiece. We have the nucleus of our atom. Now the next bit of information on how to play this periodic board game of Bohr models is we need to know how many rings or how many energy levels there are around our atom. It's really easy. All we need to know or all we use is we use the, the period numbers to tell us the number of orbitals from for our Bohr model. So if we're making carbon, which is found right here on number 14, on group 14, it's on the second period. So what that means is I need to have two rings or two orbits. And now we're well on our way to kind of figure this out. Now the last thing we need to know is the number of electrons. Well, if we know that carbon has six protons, and if we're making a neutral carbon, we know that we have six, six electrons to work with here. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to play this Bohr board game or Bohr periodic board game. Again, we are trying to get to carbon on the periodic table. Now to do that, just like any board game, you got to start at space one. So we're going to start our character, our little guy here at hydrogen or space one. Now, as we go along each space, we are going to add electrons to each of those levels or each of those different orbits. So on row one, starting at space one or atomic number one, we can go one and then I got to go all the way over here two spaces. So that means I'm going to add one, two electrons to our very first orbit. Now when I go to Atomic number three, keep going around my board game. That's all the way back over here. So I'm going to go three, four, five, six. So that's all of our six electrons. But in row two, I'm going to add one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And that's it. That's the Bohr model of carbon. I have now used all of my electrons. I have the proper number of protons and proper number of neutrons. And I'm just using the periodic table as kind of a board game. Let's try this again. This time, let's try to make argon. Okay? 
So if you wanted to pause the video, you can do this yourself or follow along with me. But argon is all the way down here. It's number 18 on the periodic table. So I need to go ahead and figure out a few things about argon. The first thing, I'm going to go ahead and draw the nucleus of this atom. So we have here, we have protons is equal to 18. Right? So the protons, positive protons is equal to 18. Now the number of neutrons, we have 40 here, right? So we have the atomic mass is 40. That's the mass of the entire nucleus. So in order to figure out the number of neutrons, I'm going to go ahead and take 40 and subtract 18, right? So that leaves us 22 neutrons. So I'm going to do 22 neutrons. Now I'm going to look where argon is. I need to figure out how many number of orbitals it has. So I look here and it's 1, 2, and 3. It's on the third row. So I need 1, 2, 3 rings. All right, now I'm going to start my character at number 1. And for the first ring, I can go 1, 2 spaces. So 1, 2 spaces. Now I'm going to go to the second ring, start over here, and I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I can go 8 spaces. So for my next ring, I'm going to go ahead and add 8 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 8 electrons. Now I'm trying to get to argon over here, so I need to go to the next atomic number, 11. So start here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It took me 8 spaces before I can get to argon. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's argon. Kind of big. It has 2 in the first ring, 8 in the second ring, and 8 in the third ring. It's pretty easy if you know how to play the board game. Now let's get to one that's a little bit more challenging. Let's do bromine. Now, why is bromine more challenging? Well, you have to deal with all of these valence electrons here. And I just want you to know that when you deal with those valence electrons, you got to, it's kind of like playing chutes and ladders. So I'm going to just highlight those valence electrons there. So the valence electrons are the ones that kind of sit lower in the periodic table. And how do you deal with them? Well, what happens is, is like I said, playing chutes and ladders, they kind of fall down a little bit. Uh, and I'll show you exactly what to do there. So I'm trying to make bromine, which is found right here. It's on the fourth orbital. So really quickly, again, I'm going to just draw my nucleus. My number of protons equals 35. That's the atomic number. Now I'm going to round this up to 80 and subtract 35 from 80, right? So that leaves 45 neutrons. Now, bromine is in the fourth period, so that means it has four rings. One, two, three. Kind of running out of room here. Let's do four. It's okay. Now i got to build myself up to bromine, so I'm going to start it. Place one, and I can go one, two. So I can put two in this ring. Do one, two. For the next ring, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there you can go 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I can do 8 in the next ring. The third ring, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so the fourth ring, this is where it gets kind of weird because we have to deal with these transition metals. Now, in order to do that, I can put two in the fourth ring, in the top of the fourth ring. So I'm going to do one, two. Now, these transition metals, like I said, it's kind of like playing chutes and ladders. This is where you basically fall down a chute. The transition metals, actually, the electrons fall back and they go in a lower ring than they actually should. So when I go here to this next sc um, sc scandium, scandium's electron or the electron that represents the area where scandium should be doesn't belong in the outside ring and actually falls back a ring. It goes inside. So there are one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten electrons in the transition metal area that go in a ring right below. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to add those ten electrons in there. So they filled in a ring below. But I'm trying to get to bromine. And so I need to go back up a ring because I'm back at the main group elements and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And so there are five more electrons that go on the outer ring now because they come kind of back up. They're kind of like a ladder. One, two, three, four, and five. So this is the Bohr model for bromine. That's kind of an extra challenge for you dealing with these transition metals. So again, the transition metal electrons fall back a ring. But I hope you know how to make Bohr models now. They should be pretty easy if you know how to make play the periodic Bohr game. Have a good one.